Welcome to our next video on continuous random variables and their probability distributions. In this video we're going to move on then to the continuous uniform distribution. So if you remember from the previous chapter, the uniform distribution was the easiest kind of distribution to look at or analyze. So this is going to be the same case for continuous random variables. This is the simplest continuous distribution and it's analogous to its discrete counterpart. A continuous random variable x with the probability density function equal to this. So f of x equals 1 over b minus a. That's it. For x being in between a and b. So this is a graph of it. It's beautiful. A continuous uniform PDF just looks like this where this value then or its highest probability is equal to 1 over b minus a. So that's the whole PDF for uniform distribution. So we can calculate the mean and variance for this uniform distribution like this. So mu or my average or my expected value is just a plus b over 2, so pretty much the average, right, or the midpoint. And sigma squared, which is my variance, equals b minus a quantity squared divided by 12. Okay, so if you want to see why these exist or proof on these, you can see it in the book. So if you want to look at that, just remember your difference of squares formula, where b squared minus a squared equals that. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let the continuous random variable x denote the current measured in a thin copper wire in milliampers. So same example, we're just dragging through all these new words and calculations. So recall that the PDF is f of x equals 0.05 for x between 0 and 20. What's the probability that the current measurement is between 5 and 10 milliampers? What's the mean and variance of this distribution? Okay, so first of all, I like to visualize what's going on. So I have this graph between 0 and 20, and I want to know what the probability is of being between 5 and 10. So this shaded region is what I want to calculate. So I do that like normal. So the probability that x is between 5 and 10, and I integrate that from 5 to 10, just my normal function, and I get 0.25. So one quick way to check yourself on this is that is a fourth, right, or 25%. So I look at this as a whole from 0 to 20, and from 5 to 10 then would be a fourth of that. So that would be correct. So that would be one-fourth or 25%. So I was also asked to find the mean and variance, so let's do that. So mu, or the expected value, equals a plus b over 2. So a plus b over 2 would be 10 milliampers. So we know that's correct, right? The midpoint of my range of values is 10. Okay, so now let's find the variance. The variance then is b minus a quantity squared over 12. So I plug those values in and I get 33.3. So if you notice, that expected value and that variance are the same ones I got using different formulas in a previous video. I'm sure you guys remember those details. However, the reason that's the same then is because this all along was a continuous uniform distribution. So even though I used different formulas in previous videos, I could get the same one using the continuous uniform distribution formulas because it falls into that category as well. So the uniform distribution is one of our easiest and our favorites just because all of the calculations are so simple. Let's then look at the cumulative distribution of a uniform distribution. Okay. So if my random variable is between a and b, then this is what my cumulative distribution function would look like. So capital F of x is my cumulative. I would integrate this PDF. So if you notice, I go from a to x so that I could get this cumulative distribution function in terms of x just as a function, okay? So the CDF is completely described like this. So when x is less than a or below my range, it's going to be equal to zero. Between my range, it's going to be described by this right here. When it's above my range or x being greater than b, it would just be equal to 1. And this is similar to what we did before on a non-uniform distribution. It's just the same idea. Okay, so here's the graph of what that would look like, and we did this example last time. So it would be 0 before my range, just a linear graph in my range, 
and then the value 1 outside of my range. And the reason this is always just a linear function then like this is because my uniform distribution is just a horizontal line. So integrating a horizontal line would give me a linear function like that. Okay, so let's look at this fun example. Suppose it takes a data collection operator between 1.5 and 2.2 minutes uniformly to fill out an electronic form for a database. Determine the cumulative distribution function of the time it takes to fill out the form. Okay, so I have this formula as my cumulative distribution function for a continuous uniform distribution. So I have all of this. I plug in my values and I say from 1.5 to x, right? So from my lower limit to x. And then I just fill in b and a. Okay, so I'm going to integrate this then to get my function. And I'm going to get that my function is equal to 1 over 0.7x minus 2.14 when x is between 1.5 and 2. Therefore, that gives me this beautiful piecewise function y is going to be 0 when x is less than 1.5. It's going to be this function that I just came up with when x is between 1.5 and 2.2. And it's going to be the number 1 when x is greater than 2.2. So it's not too bad. We know that there's always going to be a 0 before my limits. So before 1.5, there's going to be the function within these limits. And then it's going to be the value 1 when it's greater than this limit. So that's it for uniform distributions. They're the most simple kind. They're the best ones to solve for, so take advantage of it when you see it.